So what do you think of my setup there? Two fishing poles sticking out the back. It's nowhere near the weirdest thing I've ever hauled on my motorcycle. Getting ready in a week and a half to go on a camping trip with my grandson. We're going to do a little bit of fishing. So I had to get a couple of fishing poles. I don't know what the heck that is. And I noticed as I came up here, right across the street from this Walmart, is Santa's Village. And it seems to be pretty much back in business. And even similar to the way it used to be, they opened it last season, I think it was, after being closed for a long time, as some kind of a wildlife education center. But now I noticed one of the rides. They've got this fire truck that pulls a couple of carts that goes around, and I noticed it was operating. So some of the rides that used to be part of the Santa's Village Amusement Park are back functioning. And I also noticed last weekend the parking lot was very crowded. And there's the cars. I don't know if you can see them with this camera, but those are the little cars that are kind of trapped in a track where you can't go off the track, you just drive around, you can just accelerate and brake. And it sure looks like those are ready to rock and roll. So I'm thinking they're giving it another shot to bring back Santa's Village back to the way it used to be as a full-on amusement park. So that would be great. They had them all over the place, all the way out to California. There was a Santa's Village out there. I don't know if they were directly associated with each other or what. But what a great day today. Couldn't be a more perfect day. 77 degrees, partly cloudy. As soon as you get moving, it feels nice and cool. I get back to my garage. I'm going to do a video reply to Navy Thomas video. He did a bypass on his kickstand safety. I don't know if it's just Kawasaki's but probably after a number of years pretty much every bike you end up having trouble with one of the safeties and the kickstand switch is notorious to be the first to go because it gets all kinds of mud and dirt and garbage up in it. So although I can't really show you exactly how I did it, I can describe it and you can get an idea and I'll show you how I rigged it up. When I fix something I like it to stay fixed. I never have to mess around with it again so when I do it I do it as if I want it to last for 20 years. Okay, here so you can look the way it is on a Kawasaki Vulcan 500. Let me see if I can get the light positioned correctly here so you can see something and hold the camera at the same time. There we go. This is where the little mechanism mounted. This part that mounted here was aluminum and then it had a rubber boot right here and then it had a plunger that touched this piece right here so that when the kickstand would go back up it would retract this way the little plunger would come out so as you put the kickstand down the plunger would go inside the body of the mechanism and then break the contact and then obviously when you put the kickstand back up again the plunger would retract and make contact to complete the circuit so as you can see I totally eliminated it because after a while it just gets splashed with so much mud and road salt and gunk that it just stops working now the proper way to fix it, if you want to call it a fix, because technically mine wasn't a fix, it was a bypass, is to just go and get another one and put it in its place. But I'm used to motorcycles that don't have any safeties anyway, and I think the best safety is your brain, but be advised this is something I can't recommend, but it's what I do. And so I took and cut the whole wire. The whole wire is gone, and where it used to be is it comes out under the wiring harness up on here, and this is what's left of it. This right here is just some heat shrink tubing 
and the actual connection is right up in this area where my finger is there. Right here is where the connection is. And the connection is soldered, then taped with electric tape, and then heat shrink tubing. And then I put the extra tubing and just put this down here too. So there's almost no way, and it's behind the radiator and behind the frame, so there's almost no way water is going to work its way up in there. Not easily. So that's the way I solved the problem. Now I'm sure in the near future you're probably going to find out with motorcycles that you're not going to be able to bypass the safeties anymore. I noticed with some mechanisms in commercial vehicles they're sending some kind of a pulse or some kind of signal through there so that without putting the switch back or the safety device back you can't just bypass and hook the wires together. So it may be a while longer on some motorcycles, definitely the older motorcycles like mine no problem. So. Be aware that you may try this with newer motorcycles and it may not work at all. But then I'm, I'm from the era when I had my Harley Davidson, it had no safeties at all. You could start it in gear if that's what you chose to do. So basically it was up to you to use your brain to uh, be, the, be the safety and not do something stupid on your motorcycle. In fact, I remember the days of riding lawnmowers too. If you fell off your riding lawnmower while it was running, you basically went chasing after it down the street. Hopefully you weren't injured so bad that you could chase after it or yell at somebody to chase after it for you because it just kept on going until it crashed. And the funny thing about the modern safeties on the motors, uh, the mowers, the dead man switch, is a lot of girls especially that are real lightweight. We used to have, for summer help, some of the guys' uh, daughters would come down where I worked and do the summer help uh, mowing the lawns. And they only weighed like 85, 90 pounds, so they wouldn't always sit down low enough on the seat to actually trigger the safety so we'd have to actually bypass the safety so that they could actually mow the grass so yeah they can be a good thing but they can also in some cases if you don't fit the profile of an average individual sometimes safeties can give you some trouble I know I weigh about 150 pounds and when I used to mow uh, when it wasn't summertime we didn't have summer help and I used to jump on the riding lawn mowers even 150 pounds if I would go over certain bumps the mower would stall out for a few seconds and then catch back up again so yeah, it does need about a constant 110 pounds pressing down on it. But Anyway, this is one way to do it, and definitely uh, if you checked out Navy Thomas's video, you will see that he's got the little uh, splice clips, which if you're on the road, my way isn't going to work because you're not going to have a soldering gun and heat shrink tubing, at least not the average person. So I would say one of his splice clips would be a real quick way to do it. You just cut the wire, crimp it with the splice clip thing, and it'll get you where you got to go to where you can... Uh, later on decide how you're going to deal with it either bypass it or buy another safety switch and replace it so anyway take care everybody